After 10 years of planning, design, really building a community around the idea of this trail and getting some, some funding, we were able to finally start in earnest. We're going to explore an entire watershed today. After a lot of hard work, a lot of creativity, and I think a vision, we finally had it realized just now with our sixth graders, which made us really, really happy. We've got five stops we're gonna make. We're calling them learning circles. One of the hallmarks of our work here within the Biosphere Collaborative has always been a belief in whole system education. So often, students are thrust into these little fractured pieces of the puzzle, and what we'd like to do is show them a whole puzzle first, and then they can understand the pieces so much better. This is the first place that clouds come to shore and drop rain. The place we started really was, let's look at the weather cycle. How is the weather born? Where is it born? And then what happens after it manifests in the form of rain or snow? Well, that's a watershed. That's how much rain fell here last year. 10 feet. How many places on the Oregon coast have an entire coastal temperate rainforest watershed in a three mile walk. It just doesn't exist. So that was learning circle number one. We take them out in the field and they actually walk the same path as this raindrop has done and will do for millennia. This amazing lesson space. And they're moved up by that pulling action. Of to the get these kids out on the landscape and, so and really feel what it's like to have that water come out of the sky, show up from underground, and then actually measure it down at the bottom of the hill. Come on this way, there you go. In this series, we're going to investigate the journey of a raindrop. From where For in-classroom use, we created nine videos which trace the exact same trail that we did with the students live as a field experience from where the weather's born at 600 feet and you have these stops all along the way. We, we, we think of it as sort of the gravitational migration of water. Remember we said that 10 feet of rain fell at the headland. I've taught science in schools for many, many years, and there's always that challenge of making it valuable, making it connected. Students are connected to things that they personally experience, and if they don't experience it and don't feel connected to it, they forget about it. The ocean would have been 10 miles that way. What we try to do is just instill a sense of wonder, and once you're, you have your heart and your mind opened by wonder, you can stick all kinds of things in there. This is a unique opportunity to bring students of, I guess, all ages to a place where they can understand the big picture of life on Earth gravitationally as they drop from where the weather is born all the way down a watershed to a lake to a gorge to an estuary to a river and then finally into the sea where the weather started and they come to understand the full circle of life. And the takeaway from that is much bigger than just remembering the steps in the water cycle. It's a personal connection to a place which makes all the difference in not just sixth grade, but taking that to become a lifelong learner who cares about what's happening in the world around them. So we've built this program in partnership with West Wind, but also with the Oregon Coast Aquarium and on the funder side with NOAA. Their uh, Be Wet program is really what put the dollars in motion, culminating into something that we really are proud of and that we're really excited to continue and build upon. But you can't shake hands with a sitka tree. One of the issues with trying to teach environmental conservation and things about global climate change that's hard inside a classroom is that it's impersonal. By connecting it to a place and a lived experience, it changes a student's mindset who then cares to learn more and is motivated to take steps to change. There you go, my dear. Seeing a student discover for the first time the wonder of what lives in a watershed and how it all works and the excitement that they have in their faces and their eyes light up. And those moments are nourishing to us as a, as a collaborative. Surgeon General Murthy has said we have an epidemic in this country. A lot of that is due to the fact that they are in a very flat, very electronically driven world. I think the biggest aha is the rest of the world is a fascinating, beautiful, intriguing, fun place to be just to counterbalance all that time they spend on their phones and on tablets. 
We are an antidote to an epidemic.